So today is also a special day because we have a theme day. Today is Women in Tech. So I'm very, very pleased to see a lot of fellow women in tech in the audience. We already reached a 70-30 ratio for today. Woo! And I know there are still a lot of people coming this afternoon, so I'm very short. I'm very sure we're going to hit the 60-40 today as well. Thank you very much. And now it is my honor to introduce you to today's keynote speaker. He is the godfather of Israel's technological revolution. For, the, for over 40 years, he has been supporting, investing, and co-funding over 70 high-tech companies. And he already touched your lives. Because in 1996, he co-invested in the first messaging online service, ICQ. 19 months later, that company got sold for over $400 million. And with that, he inspired an entire generation to go out and do their own thing. He can call a long list of awards on his own. He is in Tech's Top 25. He is one of the uh, high personality investors, and believe me, he is really such a nice guy. And he is one of the 50s most important people of the decade. So there's also one thing I've heard from him. He said one of the most important criteria for success is talent. So it is now my pleasure to introduce him on a stage with an audience which is so full of talent. Please welcome with me Yossi Vadi. Thank you very much. What an introduction if my my, if my father would have been here, he would enjoy it. And if my mother would have been here, she would even believe it. And uh, what uh, was not told to you that out of the over 70 companies which I invested in, 20 failed big time. I had to close them. Some of them because of idiotic things which I've done. Some of them for embarrassing things which I have done, and some of them for both idiotic and embarrassing. So please take this introduction with a grain of salt. It's very nice to see you, Campuneros. How are you today? Hey, guys, we heard that in Berlin there is a lot of energy. This is the maximum you can uh, scream. Try, uh, give it another try. How are you? Very good. Before I go, before I go to my talk, I want to say that in spite of all the social networks and the internet and Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and Foursquare and uh, Instagram and uh, Pinterest, is it not nice to see people face to face? Good. Now, I would like that, uh, that everybody who is sitting to, next to somebody he knows Raise your hand. If you know your neighbor, raise your hand. If you don't know the people which sit next to you, raise your hand. So I think that the first thing we have to do is to do a little bit of get uh, to know each other. So in the next 30 seconds, each one of you has exactly eight people around him. Go and shake the hands of all the eight people around you. Please say hello. Nice to meet you. How are you? What is your name? Okay, that's good as a start. Now, okay, okay, guys, I have a speech I have to deliver. 
When I count to three, not before, when I count to three, not before, everybody is turning around and shake the hand of the guy who is sitting exactly behind him. One, two, three. Okay, now let's do some few things that we cannot do on Facebook. Facebook is great, but in Facebook you cannot knock on the floor with your foot. Knock on the floor with your foot. Try better. In Facebook you cannot scream as much as you can. Go and scream as much as you can. You are very good. Can you stand and do it again? Ah! Ah! A round of applause. <laughs> this was very good. Do you want to come and scream? Hey, when did you scream from the stage? Come to the stage. Shalom, Shalom in the middle. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was an excellent speech, much better than my speech. Okay, now go. We shake the hand of everybody. Tap on your tap on your shoulder of your neighbor, but not too hard. Okay. Now bow like the Japanese, make a nice bow. You cannot do it in Facebook. And last but not least, before we go to the speech, say hello the Eskimo way, rub the nose with your neighbor. One, two, three, go and rub your nose. Avner, I mean all you also, rub the nose with your neighbor. Hey guys, you are still a little bit shy, huh? <laughs> rub your nose for heaven's sake, the Eskimos are doing it all the time. No way, no way. Okay, very good. So it's really nice to be here. It's, uh, I was told this is the, the biggest campus party which uh, happened until today. One round of applause to the campus party people and all the team. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to go to the subject of my talk. And this is this work. Can you put this? I can. Uh, if you operate this, I can uh, put aside the microphone. Okay, great. That's good. Uh, I would like to share with you my observation about how to create a successful startup. Who in the who in the audience is a, a founder of a startup? Can you raise your hand? Who is working in a startup? Raise your hand. Who would like to create a startup in the next three, four, five years? Who thinks that this is a topic that I could uh, speak about, how to, that I should speak about, how to create a good startup? Who thinks it's a total waste of time to spend the next hour on it? <laughs> good. So I see we have here like 20% think it's a good topic, 3% of uh, honest guys and 75% who don't understand my accent. <laughs> what can I do? Anybody, before I go, anybody want to, uh, can guess why I'm standing behind the podium, why I'm not standing here? Nobody, so I will tell you, it happened to me more than once, not many times, but more than once, but that because of the character of my body, as you can see, I have no waist. I lost my pants in the middle of the talk, and this is, was quite embarrassing. So since then, I'm standing behind this uh, thing. You will, if you will notice carefully, you will see that I'm pulling my trousers every now and then. This is just because of the effect of gravitation. I was told no gravitation in Berlin, but it existed. Okay, you want to create a startup. You need, you need number of, uh, number of, uh, of ingredients in order to create it, and I will go very quickly on each one of them and will make few comments regarding each one of them. Startup, 
start with an idea. Yes or no? No, startup doesn't start with an idea. Startup starts with entrepreneur. Okay, you need to be an entrepreneur. You need to, to go unhappy to sleep. You need to have an idea. And uh, the idea has to drill a hole in your mind and keep you busy. And when you go on the street, when you go to sleep, when you see television, the idea is keeping knocking on your brain and want to go to go out. Most of the people have great idea in the morning and they go to sleep with the same great idea not executed. What is the reason? Why do you think people are not going and execute the, the great idea that they have in the morning? Scream, don't raise your hand, just scream. Perfectionism, okay? Fear of failure. Pardon? Laziness. Okay, maybe the, all, the, all the answers are right, but the fear of failure is prob probably the most dominant one. Why people are afraid of failure? Okay, you should come and give the talk instead of me. Stand up. Stand up. Turn around, tell them who are you and what you are doing. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Peter Anderson of Gals, getgals.com, it's an iPhone app, it's a purple magnet for your pocket. Uh, I'm a Norwegian uh, doing a bootstrap self-financed uh, startup in Cologne, Germany. So I beat the fear monster and quit my job doing very nice and lucrative uh, consulting for enterprise. And um, I found that one of my biggest fears with my ideas was that what if this fails? How am I going to explain it to my spouse? How am I going to explain it good. to my friends? And so on and so forth. Very good. You are lucky you don't have a Jewish mother-in-law because here you cannot explain a failure. But this is a different story. So ladies and gentlemen, this nice guy is representing the Norwegian invasion to Germany, right? Okay, the main, the main concern is feeling of failure. And the feeling of failure is not because of finance. But you heard what this guy, how I'm going to explain it. Losing face is the main fear. People don't want to be perceived as idiots. How you cope with this fear? If you are not able to overcome this fear, you are not going to go and create startup. As it was said, it's in different cultures, people are treated failure differently. The way, the best way, I found the best way to deal with failure whenever I'm being introduced, like this fine lady introduced all my great merits, and believe me, she didn't say half of what she was supposed to say. I go on the stage and I say, on addition to all the successes, I have a very large, very long failures, and then I'm not afraid anymore to talk about my failures. This is very important. You have to be able to content with failure. By the way, I was groomed by my mother in order to be able to do it because my mother since a very young age always advocated to me that I'm an idiot. She said, why all your cousins are so smart and you are the only idiot in the family. So I grew up, I knew that I'm an idiot, everybody knew that I'm an idiot, so I had nothing to lose in order to go and try to do startups. I spent my lifetime trying to Prove to her that I'm not an idiot, I'm still trying to do it, though she's died already, dead already 15 years ago. But maybe she's listening, who knows? By the way, she always provided me also the explanation why I'm an idiot and my cousins are not. She said, you are an idiot and they are not because they are not contaminated with the genes of your father. In societies where failure is big embarrassment, you will see a, a less, less, a much smaller number of entrepreneurs. Society have to know also how to cope with failure. 
Failing is not a big honor, but shouldn't be big embarrassment again. You have to train yourself that if you fail, you go back like a good mountain climber. You don't quit, you go to base camp, you regroup, and you go and try again. So number one, dealing with failure. Number two, second parameter, second ingredient, idea. You need an idea to start with. But you don't have to be fanatic about the idea because I would like to refer all of you to a site which is called Startup Genome, which is a site which was done by three researchers from Berkeley and Stanford. They looked into 10,000 startups and analyzed it, and they gave a lot of statistical support to what I'm telling you. And they suggest that the most successful startup are startups where the entrepreneurs have done one or two pivoting. What is pivoting? You know what is pivoting? Why don't you go and explain? <laughs> no, that's not fair because the guy is very busy eating his lunch and I'm disturbing his lunch. Anybody? No? Anybody want to, to explain what is pivoting? Anybody here have done pivoting? You have done pivoting, great. Pivoting is not the only thing you can do in startup. It, it can concern any, any situation in your life, right? It's like the, the point in time where you completely turn around, around whatsoever idea you have in your life or in your company. It's just rethinking, the, the rethinking of it. Not any, only rethinking, but really... Redoing and returning. Turning, turning the course of your thing. In the internet, it's very simple. You know, contrary to other materials, the internet is very flexible. You can create something and the HTML is very patient. You can go and change it. So you create your first idea, you go with it, and then usually you will have to change it once or twice. What they suggest in Startup Genome, if you, do, if you do no pivoting or if you are doing it more than two times, then the probability of success is lower. But if we are going to change the idea anyhow, what is the importance of the idea? I have to tell you that when I am investing, I don't care very much about the idea because it's not the idea, it's about the execution and we will come to it. You need an idea, but more important is how to take the raw idea, the rough idea, and to polish it and to create a diamond out of the original idea. You need original idea because you have to go into some area, to some space, and to begin to dig into it and to understand it and to try to figure how it works. The original idea will define the space that you are active, but it will not define your end product. Remember it. If you stick to your original idea up to the end for product, your probability of success is low. And therefore, when I do due diligence for young entrepreneurs who are uh, coming to me, I don't do two things. Number one, I don't read business plans. And I don't read business plan because only the common things to business plan and a sausage is that only people who don't know how they are being made are willing to eat them. And therefore, I don't read the business plan. And the, the guy who is selling the brassworks over there, I hope, is not mad at me. And uh, also, I don't like to watch demos. You know, I see a young entrepreneur coming to my home with a laptop and I Im immediately feel threatened because I know what will happen next. He will open the laptop. He spent the last two years devising 574 different features. Everyone is the greatest and then until he takes me by the end and try to explain to me feature by feature by feature by feature, he will not leave me alone. And believe me, I don't understand two-thirds of the words that these guys are talking. So I sit in front of the demo and in front of the enthusiastic young guys and I have to 
to demonstrate enthusiasm, because if I don't demonstrate enthusiasm, he will say that either I'm stupid and I don't understand, or I'm conceited, and I don't give him the, the importance of if worse come to worse, he, say, he will say Vadi not only conceited, but he's also stupid. So, in the beginning, I used to fake orgasms, you know, and say, wonderful, ah, it's terrific, but after 3,000 times of faking orgasms, you get tired of it. So now I don't allow them to come with the, with the laptop. So when you do demo, listen to me, when you go and try to pitch your idea to the investors, and we will come to the investors, don't focus on the demo, focus on a good, crispy, attractive, convincing, short sales pitch. Explain what is the idea, what you want to do. Much, much more effective. Next thing, the team. What do you think is the most important thing in the team? The talent, the technology, or the business experience? Who thinks talent is the most important thing? Who thinks technology is the most important thing? Hey guys, that's, that's, that's a shame. This is campus party. Think again. Who thinks technology is the most important thing? You guys are stubborn. Save my honor. At least five of you raise your hand. Who thinks technology is the most important thing? Who understands what I'm talking about? Who don't understand what I'm talking about? Good. Okay, again, go to Genome, Startup Genome, 10,000 studies. They claim that the most important thing is a team which consists of technology, talent, and business. You have to do a balanced team, and you have to, create, to have all these three ingredients when you start. If you will have only the product guys, or only the technology guys, or only the business guys, you will not be able to make it. Now, without, by the way, who, who will identify himself in this group as a technologist? Raise your hand. You guys are suffering from a very low self-image that you are technologists, but you think that you are not important. Who, think, who is a technologist who think he's not important? Raise your hand. Who thinks he's a technologist and he thinks he's very important? Good. Who thinks that, he that he's a technologist and uh, has a Jewish mother that thinks he's very important? Okay, so these are the, who think in the, in the audience that he's, he represents the talent component for, for the startup? Raise your hand. Talent. Who thinks he's business? Okay, about 5% business, about 10% talent, about 10% technology, and about 75 people who simply don't think. Okay, now, again, Genome Startup Genome, what they suggest is that the three things are important, but you, if you have to select between strong technology and strong business in the team, what is more important? Business. Who, who, who screamed business? It's you. Come over and explain to us why do you think so. Quick, quick. We don't have time. The point I'm trying to make is actually that if you have a good technologist and he doesn't know how to market his product, how to bring it to people, you don't have a product that's going to reach many people. And having a good business person, he can shop the technologist, he can shop the production. He, sh he can shop anything. And by, by your great eloquence, you must be a businessman. Uh, actually, I'm a technologist. Good for, you because, good for you because they suggest that if you have to select between of them, technology take over business. So, talent, technology, and business. Let's go now to a few comments regarding finance. You have an idea, you collected yourself together, you are not afraid of the failure 
you are not Japanese because if you fail in Japan, they found an excellent way to take the gene pool, the, the genes of the failure people out of the, the national gene pool. They make a harakiri, which is a very good way in order to improve the, the, success, the successful genes. You take a big breath and you go to look for money. Without money, it will be very difficult to start a company. So you are going to look for money. We are going to talk a little bit about how much money and from whom you get the money. Now, when you are going to raise money, there is always a debate. Should you take all the money you can get or should you take all the money that you need in the first stage? What do you think statistics shows uh, is better strategy? Strategy which will lead to higher success rate. Again? Come over, we didn't hear you. Come over. Quick, quick. Both. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is not mathematics, it's not black and white. So what do you have to take? Much or minimum? More always. More always. Okay, wrong. What happened that they show, they show that overfinance, and we know it from our business, those we, among us who are investing, you shove too much money to a startup, you increase the burn rate, you increase the burn rate, you create uh, expenses that you cannot meet, and this drive you into a vicious thing, a circle that you have to raise more money in order to, to finance it, and you cannot get uh, quickly enough into break even. What you have to do, you have to walk before you run. You have first to raise a little bit of money, then to do the proof of concept. And only once you own the proof of concept, you should go and raise more money. It doesn't help you if you start a company with 20 people. You cannot replace a nine month pregnant woman with one month, nine pregnant woman, pre nine pre pregnant woman of one month. Will not generate a baby. It takes time. So you have to build, to think, to establish, to base, and only then you have to go and to do raising money. This is very important, not intuitive, but supported by research. Now you are going to look for investors. And this is a whole subject, we can talk about it very long time. What do you think? is better for the company, Inv investors which help the company or investors which are passive? Active, active, active investors. Active and smart investors. Did you see a smart investor? If he's smart, he wouldn't invest at you. No, the rate of failure is very high as we know, right? Not right. Okay, what they suggest that investors which are meddling in your business will create for you too much disturbance, will not help, at least it will not help. What they do suggest is to, or what the research show that you need to get not investors but mentors. The mentors can be investors. This is what you call smart money. If you have an investor who can act also as your mentor, this is good. Or you can have a mentor without investing, this is also good. If you take investor who is not qualified to be your mentor, he will consume your time, give you wrong advices, etc. This is very important. So you have the money, you have the team, you have the idea, you begin to work, and now I want to say a few words about the customers the users. The most important component, the most important ingredient in the success of the life of a company are the users. Because the users in the internet are not just the consumers of your product, the users in the internet you get one, two, three, four, five, five things bundled in one body. Five different personalities embodied in one body. First of all, the user is your customer. Second, if you are smart, the user is your distributor also. 
you should turn your user to be your distributor. You should turn him to tell his friend. You should uh, induce him to tell about the product with the word of mouth. You should create virality, which is easier to say than to do. ICQ was uh, mentioned, you know, we, after a few months, we began to get 100,000 users every day, which was amazing, and the, this phenomenon is still going on for 16 years. We couldn't understand in the beginning from where they are coming, how they hear about it, and we love to make the calculation. You know, at that time, most of the promotion was done by direct mail. You print a piece of paper, you stuff it in an envelope, you put an address, you put a stamp, you go to the post office, you send it 80 cents. So 100,000, and the conversion rate was like 1%. In order to get 100,000 users, you had to send 10 million pieces of mail. So getting 100,000 free users was equivalent to $8 million a day of direct mail. In order that you will understand the power of viral marketing. Today, people don't, don't regard it anymore because direct marketing is almost non-existent. But your users are your most important ally. They are your client. They are your distributor. They are also the guys who are stealing your property. They are the pirates. The users are the pirates. And it took 10 years. It took the music industry and the movie industry 10 years to realize that you get the consumer and the distributor and the pirate bundled. What they tried to do, they tried for 10 years very hard to cut the user to three pieces. They want to get the consumer without the pirate and the pirate without the distributor. But this is impossible. You get all the three of them together only when they begin to, began to realize that this is the reality. They were able to begin to crack these industries and to find how to do the marketing. Again, this should be the subject of a different talk. Another thing which the user is doing for you is your developer. Because if you are smart enough and you architect your product in a way that it's not a product but a platform and you allow the user to come and add Think. So you allow him to take your product and to subject it to his ideas, you get a very powerful group of allies which will go and push your product, they will fight for your product, they will develop your product, they will push the product if they get part of it. So the user can become your developer, very important. And last but not least, the user is also your best strategist and your best advisor. You have to listen to the user. The user is smarter than the developer. You think you have a product, but the user knows what he wants and what he doesn't want. You have to be all the time with your ear on the ground listening to the user. You have to collect data. You have to do tests, A-B tests. Again, going back to Startup Genome, they show very clearly that if you are using analytics, you will get better products. So the user and the, you, the Norwegian guy, the Viking, can I call you the Viking? I don't know what is the name. Peter, Fida, F-I-D-A. Can, can you say it in Hebrew? No? Uh, 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 my Hebrew is a bit rusty. Uh, Vidar. Vidar. Yes, perfect. Okay, Vidar, did I forget anything regarding what the user can do for you? They can motivate you to go further. Pardon? <laughs> uh, good feedback always motivates a bootstrapping uh, uh, startup guy. Good. Okay. Now we are going to the most important component of all. The most important component in the success of a startup is what? One which I didn't mention until now. Pardon? Luck! You are a genius. Come over. This is what it said. Luck and serendipity. Who knows, who knows what is serendipity? Raise your hand. Who doesn't know what is serendipity? Oh, come over.
What did you shout? Tell them. I shout that you need to be lucky to... Closer, closer, stronger. Okay, I shouted that you need to be lucky to get a successful startup. Okay, now that's not good enough. Now, how you get lucky? <laughs> I don't know. If I have been lucky, I wouldn't be here and I would rest on the beach. Really? <laughs> Who thinks that he is here because he is lucky? Raise your hand. You see, all the lucky people are here. You are the only... <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, how we increase luck? Uh, I think it's how we increase luck. Anybody has an idea? No, we and you spoke. Ah, here is Karen. Karen, come over. Let me do. Ah, you are with your broken. Karen, Karen, if if next year after you already gave your speech, today at what time? Four thirty. Today so, at 4.30. So Hi this guys. is Karen. Karen, tell them, let, let me do a little bit of promotion as an Israeli to Israeli. What you are going to talk about at 4.30 today? I'm going to talk about cyberpunk, hacker culture, and how we can get more women into hacking. So hack the planet. Yeah. Thank Who you. think that it would be a much better choice that Karen would stand here instead of me? <laughs> Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Thanks, Yossi. Okay, don't miss Karen. Uh, Karen, uh, she's really an extraordinary speaker. She speaks very eloquently. I don't understand anything she say. <laughs> what, are, what are the topics you are going to cover in Cyberpunk? What are the name of all the books and the movies? Give some. I'm going to talk about Neuromancer, The Matrix, Johnny Mnemonic, uh, other William Gibson work, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell. It's going to be fun. Uh, come see me at 4.30. But now, uh, I want to tell Yossi... Go ahead. Actually, the secret ingredient to increase your uh, measure L of luck, and in fact, maybe the secret ingredient to all of Israeli high-tech, is what we have in abundance. It's the one Israeli sustainable, renewable resource. It's chutzpah. Have chutzpah. you heard this word before? Does anyone know what chutzpah means? Can you explain what is chutzpah? Yes, it means uh, interjecting in the middle of Yossi Vardy's presentation, taking over and taking the mic. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's good. Chutzpah is an Israeli word. It's also in Yiddish. Uh, it means that you have the audacity to just stand up and do your thing. You don't wait for luck to get to you. You go out there and you find it. You knock on everybody's doors and you don't take no for an answer. That's what chutzpah means. Right. No, this is what, what luck means. You want to be lucky, don't sit there and wait for it, go and search for it. Go and walk, go and walk and find it. And when goddess Fortuna, who was the goddess of luck, knock on your front door, better she doesn't find you in the toilet. So luck and serendipity. Now, Karen, can you explain to them also what is serendipity? Because only very few... And you know the source of the name, Karen? Uh, I don't know the source of the word serendipity. I can imagine it comes from Latin or Greek. Greek. Thank you. Can you come to my presentation later? I also have some Greek words. <laughs> Perfect. No, really, I do. So serendipity, what it actually means is that uh, chance encounter of all of the elements in one place, that the stars are right, and that everybody, the right, the right people are meeting at the right time and the right circumstances. It's a that secret combination of chance or luck or the goddess Fortuna is smiling, smiling upon you and the stars are just right and everything happens. And good things happen to you without you know. And exactly. In, in our industry, in, the, in our startup industry, serendipity plays a very important role. You have to reach out. You have to go to conferences. I think I'm going to 50 conferences a year. You have to hang out with people. You have to listen and you have to be ready to grab opportunities that you didn't think about before. Uh, when you come to such a place, you meet somebody that you didn't know before and something good come out of it, it's uh, serendipity. Very important. So luck and serendipity are important, but you cannot sit idle and wait for them. Next component, you know what uh, Newton said. 
Newton, to what uh, Newton attributed his success? Anybody knows? You guys are educated guys. Anybody know who is Newton? Newton is the guy who invaded the uh, doom. No, no, no. Uh, you are you are very imp impressive. Say, t don't come here. Tell tell from the audience what Newton said. He said that he stood on the shoulders of giants, but it was actually a joke about the hook. Yeah, he that's was a very yeah. small person. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, what uh, that the two things are true, but we will we will use only the first one. Newton say that he was far sighted. It is only because he stood on the shoulder of giants. I am saying, by the way, that if I succeeded in the Israeli high tech, it's only because I stood on the shoulder of children. But uh, that's a different uh, different story. And the point I'm trying to make is that you never do things on your own. You, you have to collaborate, you have to lean and rely upon other people. And uh, I already mentioned the importance of platform. You have to attract people to what you are doing, either by being nice or by offering some utilities or by creating platform or by creating other things that they can benefit from what you are doing it. If you are doing that, people will aggregate to what you are doing and good things will happen to you. One simple way, if you have a startup, try and go and do some events in your space. Try to aggregate more people, wider community around yourself because you will always need inputs and collaboration from other people. Don't sit in your basement alone, detached from the rest of the world. It's not Good, and I think that this event which, uh, which uh, Campus Party is doing here, which is really probably the, the biggest in the world, is an excellent example to how aggregating and meeting other people can work wonders for your startups. This is very, very important. The next thing that I would like to mention is the social thread. Today, if you have a product which doesn't have social thread, which doesn't involve your friends or experts or people who are doing in the same, uh, involved in the same space, your product will not get traction. You have to find ways how to add uh, reviews or rating or joint effort or sending messages when you are in a, when you are in a in a product, never mind what is the product, you're doing search, any activity can use your friends, can use the other people, wisdom of the crowd, etc. You always have to think how to thread your product with social components. Again, when we, when we got this amazing effect at ICQ, we couldn't understand why 100,000 people came every day and then when we began to listen to the audience and to hear what they are saying we understood something very trivial and very simple which was not understood very well at that time that people the two basic things that people want to have is to to be attended to and to attend to each other so no matter what is your space you always able to put a social component into it go and do it. Luckily enough, today many, many things are available as services to other things. Rating, discovery, wisdom of the crowd, talkbacks, a referral to Twitter, to Facebook, etc. Go and integrate them in the product. You don't do it, you have a crippled product. Next. Next, uh, next thing, and here I have to make a to, to, to make a, a confession. I wrote release fast because with, uh, with all my companies I thought and as I said I was involved, uh, I'm invo was involved in 80 companies. We always, our policy want to release fast. I went however yesterday again to read the, as you can see, the genome, uh, startup genome report which I think is very telling. 
Uh, if you want to go to find it, you can go into the internet, you type www.blahblahblahblah.com and you will get there. And you find the blah 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 at Google. So, uh, the Norwegian is the only guy who is laughing off my job. The two of us are in a very pathetic situation, I must tell you. Uh, this is because of lunch. I have to tell you one thing, this lot, I have to tell the people of uh, Campus Party. Who is here from Campus Party? Raise your hand. You know, putting somebody between the audience and lunch is not such a great uh, slot. It's better than the slot after lunch that we professional speaker, speakers call it the graveyard uh, slot because everybody is falling asleep. You know, a few months ago I spoke at 2 o'clock after lunch and a guy felt asleep when I spoke so I told the guy next to him would you please wake him up? Wake him up. So he looked at me, he said, you made him sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> no, we are, and I'm doing a little bit better. Uh, so I, I thought uh, releasing fast is, uh, is the, right, the, right, uh, the right strategy. They suggest that you have to release slowly, you have to build it solid. And the same issue goes, by the way, regarding exits. You know, in Israel, we have Paco. The, the, the audience know who you are. Come, no, no, come over, come over, come on. The, now, now, now it's my area. Hey, hey. Who, who are you? Josibardi. You are Paco Ragajeres, me, Josibardi. No? Hey, guy, this guy started it all 17 years ago with one evening, 200 game developers. He's the guy who created Campus Party. Paco. <laughs> He's our hero. Terrific, terrific event. Your ICQ is my hero. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you too for doing it. It's really terrific. Wonderful. I'm telling you sincerely, I came from Israel. I thought I saw everything. I walk down the stairs, I, I saw so much energy, you know, it's really like uh, living on steroids. I feel as if I'm drugged, but I didn't smoke anything. Not yet, at least. Okay, so we have in Israel, we have a big debate in the high-tech community if you should do early exits or you should do later stage exits. If you should sell the companies where they are, when they are smaller, you have to try and build them build them big. If you build them big, you can get a more mature companies, but the risk of growing the companies is very, very high. Who think that uh, you should do early exits? Raise your hand. Who think you should take the risk and build big companies? Raise your hand. I have a big problem, you know. Who doesn't have any position? Raise your hand. Who doesn't think it's important? Who thinks Cecilia is that he's wasting his time sitting here in the audience? A bunch of liars. Okay, so we have this debate. It's very heated debate. All the press is in there. The Minister of Finance has a position if you have to do early exits or not. At the end, two months ago, I moderated the panel at the President Conference and I decided to bring an expert from another field to give us some advice, not from the high-tech field, but from another field. And I asked her if we should do early exits or late exits. Unfortunately, she supported the late exit strategy. She said early exits are very bad. It was Ruth Westheimer, the famous sexologist. And she, I'm telling you, is against early, against early exits. Now, the user experience, they didn't get it. I feel so pathetic, I must tell you. Humiliated, you know. Paco, don't invite me next year. Uh, User experience, this is the holy grail. The holy grail is to provide the user with, user with a terrific user experience. This is a subject not of one talk, not of ten talks, it's a subject of forest studying and still not everybody can, can get it. How you create, this is a much better microphone, how you create an experience that when the user create the experience, he feels that he has a really terrific thing. Again, citing from ICQ, 
We used to begin thanks letter to ICQ, I love you ICQ, etc. I spent three years trying to find the formula, how to create the ultimate user experience. I tried to develop the globalized, unified uh, user experience theory. And of course, after three years of work, I came to the conclusion that in the very same way that you cannot write a book how to create music like Mozart or how to create movies like Spielberg, some people, God, come to them at night, touch their shoulder and tell them that you guys are, you will be a genius in user experience. They have the intuition. They have to, they know how to do it. If you see one like this, grab him and don't leave him alone. The key, the holy grail is user experience. Unfortunately, as I said, uh, we don't have the time and this is not the forum. The last point which I will tell you in this short, quick overview of my experience from all the mistakes I have done is that when you deal with other companies, you always deal with other companies. You need to sell something, you, need, you want to sell your company, you need to buy something, develop, and this is probably the one very helpful advice that I can give you. People don't deal with companies. You don't do business with Telefonica. You don't do business with Wellington. You don't do business with IBM. You do business with people. You do business with people. If you, if you have an interest in a company, go and groom a champion. Find one guy put him in your mind and say, this is going to be my guy. This is going to be the guy who trusts me. This is going to be the guy who understands what I'm doing. This is going to be the guy who feels that I'm not hiding from him anything. You call him your champion and you groom the champion and you invest in him and you share with him what's going on and you send him information and you gain his interest. And then when you want to do a deal with the, within the company, he will go and do the deal because an outsider cannot do a deal in a, in a company. You have, you have to get to groom a champion and you have to let the champion to do it. In all my exits, I always had a guy that took a genuine interest in what we are doing. He thought it will serve his purpose, it will increase his prestige, it will uh, be able, enable him to, to, to advance in the company or whatever but he knew what's going on. This is very, very important. People think they deal with companies. You don't deal with companies. Build champion. And if you are smart over the years, you are building series of champions in all your potential strategic uh, allies. It's a long process. It's a tedious process. Sometimes you try and uh, you tell uh, somebody what's going on, etc. and nothing come out of it. But if you don't build, if you don't build it over time, ahead of time, you try to make a quick deal, come and sell and go, will not work. And the last and the most important advice which I can give you, it's not my advice, I'm going to quote a great company called Nike. And they are advised that if you want to do something, try it again. And one last time, just do it. Thank you very much. This is over. Now I'm going uh, to make a picture we think big. The talk is over. Thank you very much. See you next year.
So thanks again, Yossi Vardi. Very inspiring talk. Good to have you here. So thanks again to him. Let's have a round of applause.